Learning data analytics and data science was without any doubt one of the best decisions of my life. Since now I can proudly say that I'm part of the one of the most in-demand industry in the world, which to me is a solid foundation to building the career of my dreams. And if you are planning to enter this field, you probably know that there are a bunch of technical skills that are required like SQL, Tableau, Python and similar. And even if learning all of these sounds overwhelming at the beginning, I can assure you that with practice 99% of people will be able to master them. However, if your goal is to get ahead of those 99% of data analysts and data scientists, we have to act like the top 1%. And the so what of this video is specifically sharing with you the 7 secret aspects that will make us join the 1%. These are aspects that not many people talk about and this is the case especially for the secret I will reveal at the end so without further ado let's get started. Number one is consistently documenting your work. Often as data analysts you will need to work on repetitive tasks. Yes, those are not the most fun part of being a data guy, but you will need to take care of that as well. One example might be that you own and maintain a company dashboard whose uh, data source is a large Excel file. Each month the finance team sends you an update Excel file as they lack a more organized database system. Your role involves merging this new data with the existing historical data in your master Excel file to keep the dashboard updated. Now because this is a repetitive task, what is really useful is to create a file where you document step by step what you are doing as soon as you receive the file from finance. Because you know maybe before adding that data to your file you have to remove some unnecessary data from the new file you got, maybe you need to check the data from finance is correct and things like that. Develop a habit of documenting your work in a clear and concise manner, maybe with a step by step guide. What you will do is just getting back to the same file and repeating the process. And also in case someone else will need to do the same task in the future, maybe because you are on holiday, your document will make super easy for others to understand and redo your work. Seems a simple thing but a lot of data analysts will just try to remember what they did in the month before and this will take a lot of time especially if there are a lot of nuances and complexities in those repetitive tasks. And here one tool that I would recommend is for example using Notion to create a step-by-step -step document where you can also include the code you might need to run every month for example for that specific repetitive task. I look at this in the same way we used to take notes at uni once we were learning new stuff. The same should happen at work. The top 1% of data professionals get organized to document what they learn at work and the tasks that they perform, especially if those are brain intensive and repetitive. Then we have navigating the gray zones. So most data analysts and data scientists find it challenging to operate in ambiguity. The desire is always for well-defined projects or worse yet explicit tasks that tell them exactly which algorithms to implement or which datasets to analyze. And sure, it's comforting to have a clear-cut roadmap, but the real magic happens in the gray zones. You see, top 1% data scientists don't wait for a neatly formatted CSV or a Jupyter notebook filled with a pre-written code. They embrace the questions that lack straightforward answers. Questions like like how can we understand our customer behavior better or how can we make our machine learning models more accurate. So the first step is uh, acceptance. And yes, ambiguity is unsettling, but the uncomfortable zones are where innovation happens. There is a misconception that you need to know every algorithm, statistical model or data visualization tool out there. That's a myth because what really matters is your ability to make sense of the unclear, to navigate through the complexities. So before diving into coding or data manipulation, the experts spend the significant amount of time thinking and planning. They consult cross-functional teams, talk to domain experts and pore over academic papers. They define what success looks like in a world where success itself can be an elusive term. So for instance, if the goal is to reduce customer churn, the next question becomes by how much? It's easy to throw around numbers like we aim to reduce it by 30%, but is that feasible or even meaningful? Top analysts and scientists consider the trade-offs. They weigh the cost and benefits. Once the ground work is complete, they don't just jump straight into coding. Instead, for instance, they map out their approach in data flow diagrams. This plan then goes through rigorous peer reviews. They invite feedback, make adjustments, and only when there is a consensus do they plunge into the fascinating world of data manipulation, machine learning, and statistical modeling. So the bottom line is, if you're waiting for crystal clear instructions or a detailed plan to navigate the world of data, you will be waiting forever. Ambiguity isn't a phase, it's a permanent fixture in this ever-evolving field. Your ability to work through it to turn vague questions into profound insights is what sets you apart as a top 1% data analyst or data scientist. Become the expert everyone needs. 
So top 1% data scientists and data analysts are not just number crunches or code writers. They are invaluable assets for their organizations. They are often the go-to individuals when it comes to intricate analysis or complex machine learning models. When a critical data-related issue arises, everyone knows the responsibility lies with them. And so how do you reach that level of mastery? Well, if you're already honing your skills to thrive in ambiguity, you are on the right track. When you dive deep into these problems, breaking them down into manageable issues and finding innovative solutions, you naturally focus on a specific domain. And the more you dig, the more complex layers you unravel, becoming an authority on that topic. So imagine that you put more hours into customer segmentation or a specific marketing campaign than anyone else in your team or even the entire organization. You become the person people seek when there are questions or challenges in those areas. So if you're not yet that person, it's time to embody that expert you aim to become. And so be proactive, offer to tackle challenges and answer those questions. Don't just direct people to solutions, be the solution. Then we have prioritize function over flash. So while the desire of complex machine learning models and intricate data visualization is hard to resist, the best data scientists and analysts never lose sight of their ultimate objective, to provide actionable insights that drive decisions making. As data enthusiasts, it's tempting to engineer the most complex solution. You could spend hours fine-tuning a deep learning model or crafting a multi-layered interactive dashboard. But is that really the best use of your time and resources? Remember that you're solving real-world problems for actual people, not just exercising your technical skills. Skills. Maybe all you need is a straightforward logistic regression model or a simple bar graph to convey the insights effectively. The 1% aren't just masters of their tools, they are masters at identifying which tool is appropriate for the task at hand. And so in data science as in life, over-engineering can be your worst enemy, because building for what you need now doesn't mean you are short-sighted, it means you are focused and efficient. You can always iterate and scale later, but what you can't get back is time spent of, on an overly complex solution that no nobody uses. The top 1% understand that their technical skills serve as a higher purpose, to build something that works and meets immediate needs. Remember, the true mark of an expert isn't how many algorithms they know, it's their ability to apply the right tool for the job at hand within the constraint they're given. Mentorship elevates the data game. If you're aiming to be a top 1% data scientist or data analyst, mentorship shouldn't be a buzzword. It should be part of your DNA. Let's face it, the best in the field aren't just excellent at what they do, they actively nurture talent around them. This is about more than just good karma, it's a metric of your value in an organization. You can build the most intricate model or offer groundbreaking insights, but if you're not elevating your team, you're missing a key dimension of your role. Companies aren't looking for lone wolves. They are in search of pack leaders who not only excel in their expertise, but also bring others up with them. Mentorship manifests in a myriad of ways. It could be a line-by-line -line review of a junior team's member SQL code, offering constructive feedback on a machine learning model, or even just the sharing career wisdom during a coffee chat. Each one of these interactions is a brick in building a strong team and a robust data operation. But why stop at your organization walls? The creme de la creme of data science and data analytics are not content to restrict their influence to their immediate environment. They write blogs, present at conferences, and share their wisdom far and wide, amplifying their impact and extending their brand throughout the industry. Translating data skills into ROI. So here, if you witness business ups and downs, or even organizational changes and layoffs, you will know one thing, everything boils down to impact on the bottom line. Profitability isn't just a concern of business executives, it's everyone's business, especially if you aim to be a top 1% data analyst or data scientist. Yes, your analytical skills are crucial, your Python coding is very important, and your machine learning models are state of the art. But what does that all mean if it doesn't translate into actual business insights that boost revenue or reduce cost. The elite in the data world know that their work's real value is its impact on the business metrics that matter. To me, the way to see if someone is making a real impact is checking the quantifiable results that you can put in the resume. Instead of saying, build a machine learning model for customer segmentation, if you can say, develop a machine learning model that improved customer targeting, resulting in a 20% increase in conversion rates, now that's a statement that grabs attention, shows a real impact, and aligns with business goals. So go beyond just data and dive deep into your company business model. Understand how your role fits into the bigger
a picture of revenue streams, cost centers, and growth strategies. This isn't just about securing your place in the company, it's about elevating your role and becoming indispensable. Then we have seeking for feedbacks. Now, this is to me the secret that is straightforward, but maybe the most important one in the list. Once the data models are deployed and the reports are generated, many analysts and scientists might think the job is done. If you aim to be in the top 1%, however, that's far from the truth. The best in the business know the importance of closing the feedback loop. Don't just toss your insights over the fence and hope they stick. Monitor how your analysis or reports are being used. Is the viewership of your data dashboard ticking up? Are stakeholders actively discussing your findings in meetings? These are indicators that your work is making a mark. Set up calls or meetings with the key decision makers to discuss the outcome of your work. Did your predictive model impact sales or did your data visualization solve a complex problem and lead to a solution? Knowing the answers to these questions will not only improve your future work but also position you as an invaluable asset to the organization. So being proactive about gathering feedback is not just about refining your skills, it's about being looped into the next big conversations. It gives you a seat at the table, broadens your network within the organization and enhances your professional visibility. And there you go guys, these are all the key aspects that will make you and me distinguish ourselves among the other tons of data analysts and data scientists out there. Let me know in the comment section below if there are any other aspects that you would add to this list. And if this video was useful to you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. You know this massively helped me reaching out to even more people. I will leave here in the screen some other videos that you might want to check out and well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.